Have you seen what's happening out there? You are their only hope. You are not just a man. <laughs> you are my blood. I choose to be a man. You fool. This is the end. No, this is just the start. Again! The Clash of the Titans. In this review, I will be taking a look at the NECA Perseus figure based off the Clash of the Titans remake released in 2010. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now let's take a closer look at the figure. With this figure having been released in 2010, I think the head sculpt is pretty spot on to actor Sam Worthington. It's not perfect, but I can definitely tell who I'm looking at. The expression on the face is that of a somewhat angry look, with his teeth showing and nostrils flaring. There is a dirtiness to the face and the rest of the body, as this Perseus has seen some action. NECA actually released two versions of this figure, a dirty version and a clean version. I opted to go with the dirty version, as I thought it just looked better. Moving down to the torso, Perseus is wearing armor for protection. The armor is very nicely sculpted and painted. Even the shoulder pads have very detailed sculpting. The armor has a black wash over it to not only bring out the details, but to also give it a battle-worn look. I'm very impressed with how it all turned out. Perseus has large gauntlets on his forearms. They too have some nice paintwork on them. Even his undershirt has sculpted wrinkles and folds to give it a more realistic look. The skin of the arms, like his face, have that dirty wash on them. The great sculpting and paint just keeps on, as taking a look at his skirt piece, the flaps have an aged leather look to them, with the fabric clothing underneath having the same wrinkles and folds, just like the undershirt. The dirty wash continues onto his thighs. The lower legs, from his knees down to the ankles, are covered by armor pieces. The fronts have metal looking pieces connected to leather ones that wrap around the entire lower leg. Hershey's is wearing sandals on his feet. There are peg holes on the bottoms of the feet. Here's a look at the back side of the figure, and starting off with the back side of the lower leg armor, and moving up to his skirt piece, which is just as detailed as the front side. And there's more dirtiness to the back of the arms. On his lower back, a brown rope that is tied can be seen. That is for keeping his armor secured on the torso. And once again, just look at the level of detail on the armor. Going over the articulation, the head is able to look left and right. As well as slightly tilt side to side. The head can look down this much. And up this far. The shoulders can go outwards. They can also go forwards and backwards. As well as rotate 360 degrees. But be careful of the shoulder pads. The elbows are single jointed and can bend this much. And there is rotation at the elbows. The hands while stiff can slightly rotate and hinge. The waist can rotate side to side. The legs can go outwards a little, but are hindered by the skirt piece. They can kick forwards a little, but once again are hindered by the skirt piece. The knees are single jointed and can bend this much. The feet while hindered by the leg armor can go forwards and backwards, as well as slightly rock and rotate side to side. Perseus comes with two accessories. The first one up is his sword. The sword was a gift by his father Zeus. While the design of the sword is a little on the plain side, the paint quality is just as nice as the armor on Perseus. There is a wash going over the sword that gives it that dirty battle used look. Perseus has gripping hands, so the sword can be held on either. It's a little hard getting the sword in his hand, but once in, it is actually kind of a loose fit. If you mess around with it though, you can get it to where it won't move around as bad. The next accessory up is his scorpion shield. The shield was forged by the carapace of a dead giant scorpion. The sculpting yet again is very well done. There is a grayish wash over the shield to bring out the sculpted details. Turning the shield around, here's a look at the inside, where sculpted brown leather straps are attached for Perseus to hold onto the shield. The overall sculpting on the inside 
is not as good as the outside, but this is how it appeared in the film. To get Perseus to hold onto the shield, the arm must be placed through the straps, which isn't difficult, until you try to get the hand to hold onto the last strap. It's a bit difficult, but with a little work, it can be done. And here's Perseus fully equipped to take on Medusa, and looking badass doing so. Now let's take a look at the figure next to some other figures. First up is a Mattel Perseus figure from the original 1981 film. Here is Perseus next to some other human sized NECA figures. A Terminator. Rocky Balboa. Here he is next to a Star Wars Black Series Stormtrooper. And a Marvel Legends movie Wolverine. As you may have already guessed, I love this figure. While the Clash of the Titans remake isn't as good as the original, this figure turned out fantastic. Sadly, there were plans to continue making more figures from the remake, but the low sales of Perseus caused NECA to pull the plug on those. But here is proof they were intended to happen. Uh, Film-wise, we've got um, Clash of the Titans, which uh, releases the very beginning of April, and we have a brand new Perseus figure, as well as prop replicas of Perseus's sword, um, Draco's throwing knife, um, and we are working on more figures right now, including Hades and Zeus. Once again, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button, as well as click on the notification bell, so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you did enjoy this video, hit that like button. And follow me on social media, links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.